Hello, I'm David E. Hilser, and this is Dissident Signs. Dave, you're always talking about big science is wrong, big cosmology is wrong, big physics is wrong. They're all wrong, 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 wrong. And then you even give us new models, but you never tell us why they're wrong. Well, that's what I'm here to do today, is to tell you what's wrong with big science. And in this case, we're going to go over these six areas right here, and I'm going to list them all out one by one and give you some of the reasons why we critical thinkers think that these things are wrong. Now, many of my subscribers already know this. They come to this channel because finally someone is saying these things are wrong too. And there are so many reasons why, and you are absolutely right. What I'm going to put give you today are not all the reasons. In fact, if you go to sciencewoke.org and you click on problems, uh, in science, you're going to find a lot of other people's opinions about what is wrong with these areas. Now, if you are looking at this today, that's going to happen May 1st, 2019. If you're, if you're before that date, sign up. We'll alert you to when that happens. And we're going to have more and more articles on our online news magazine for critical thinkers. But let's go through this list today, and I'm going to just give you some of the reasons why we say these theories uh, are wrong, these theories and models are wrong. The Big Bang, what is the universe problem? Well, you have the Big Bang that says there's a, the universe is a pea-sized object and it explodes in the Big Bang and space and time itself and mass all explodes together. These things are built and they know at, at the first one trillionth of a second it does this and one billionth of a second it does that, etc. But in the beginning, they say something very curious and that is, well, no, space and time wasn't there. The space time that they call wasn't there. And that is also expanding with it. So the space into which we live was all compressed to this. But if that's the case, what's it, what's, where is it sitting? Is it sitting in this eternal void of nothing? Well, no, they somehow say that the entire universe is this big, yet that's all there is. There's nothing around it. That's, there's, there's, it's sitting in a non-universe. Don't try to figure it out because it's impossible. People who believe that and who subscribe to that are people who, what I say, they capitulate, capitulate. They give in to it, even though it's illogical. And they say to everybody, of course, I understand that, don't you? And by the magical words that they say, then they can get their PhD. They can go on to get become a professor and teach other people the same thing. And other people can say, I forget that. I'm going to go do real stuff. And other people say, no, uh, I'll capitulate. I believe that. Yes, uh, I understand that. Yes, even though it's illogical. Then you have the question of why is Big Bang? Why? Why, why did it explode? Why, why? Well, the current explanation are brains. And not brains, not like brain, but brain with an M. And you, they're parallel universes, and they're sort of like in these sheets, in these brains. And then they touch, and it sparks off a Big Bang. Don't ask me where that came from. Why anybody would even come up with that. I mean, it's almost sort of like make up some random story that would sort of make sense on how you could explain it and why it would happen. And that one won. It's sort of like, you know, a brainstorming session for anything goes. No, let's not try to understand the universe for real and look what's out there and give us the clues, which like we should. Well, we should. For instance, the redshift. We see redshift and that's where the Big Bang came from. Redshift, everything's moving away, like the Doppler effect. Well, it turns out that there are other explanations for redshift. Then, then Halton Arp comes along. If you haven't seen that video, take a look at it right there. Halton Arp sees red, his book, which you can actually buy still. And he says, well, guess what? You have uh, galaxies and you have quasars. And the quasars are obviously visually attached to, to galaxies. In fact, they look like they're shoot out of the galaxies, the, the, the center of the galaxies outwards, oftentimes in pairs. And they have completely different redshifts from their galaxies, which means, folks, they should be in different speeds and different traveling. They shouldn't be together. But he says, no, they aren't. And what do they do? They cut off his his telescope time they ridicule him they literally ignore him and push him away because you don't want to say the big bang's wrong that's just not said 
Uh, distribution of galaxies don't show expansion. Well, that was a paper by Ray Gallucci. Go to wiki.naturalphilosophy.org and look up that paper. I'll have that below. If I don't, make sure in the comments say, Dave, you didn't put it below, but you should have that below. And that will show you that the distributions of the galaxies don't show that they're moving away from each other or moving closer to each other, that they, in fact, are sort of distributed and moving around. But the, the distribution looks more like a, a homogeneous not like something that exploded. Then we have, of course, that every they, they say in mainstream that the earth, the universe is expanding and it's expanding at an accelerating rate. And what must be causing this is dark energy and dark matter. Anytime you have something like dark or black, they don't know what's really going on, so they try to invent it. We also know that there are different explanations. You don't need dark matter at all. You can describe the universe with Newton just fine. But anyways, you can see these are just some of the problems. We'll have George Coyne on sciencewoke.org is going to have a really great paper on, he wrote 60 pages in his book uh, and about how the Big Bang is wrong. So we're going to have him doing that and we'll have that available for you. And maybe you can already read it because it's already maybe passed May 1st, 2019. What's next? Particle physics and of course particle physics what I say, it's an invention then search. Starting in the 1930s, we invented a particle like the neutrino, then we invented quarks and W and Z particles, gluons, Higgs bosons, many other particles. We invented them, said that they existed, and then we went and found them. And of course, that has created a standard model mess, which if you haven't seen or or, or, or watch. I have some videos. Actually, I have three interviews with Dr. Alexander Unsiger. If you go to uh, even go to dissidentscience.com, click on the recommendations, you'll see I have a book by him called The Higgs Fake. You must read it. Why? Because you get things like it says right there. We have terrible methodologies when we are trying to find these particles. It is horrific. In fact, the people who are doing it don't know what the others are doing. They're just told what to do. They don't all stand around and say, is this right? Does this make sense? sense. And of course, they always end up finding what they're looking for because that gives them a chance to get that most coveted prize, the Nobel Prize. And from then on, they are worshipped and, and, and paid very highly to go and speak. And of course, it gives prestige to the university that they have no Nobel laureates, even if they are for particles that were invented. Then, of course, you have the problem is that in the end, morally, that there's nothing useful that has come from particle physics. When 60 Minutes, a, a magazine from the United States, asked the people who were building the Large Hadron Collider in Europe what they were, what particle physics has given mankind, you know what they said? The internet. No, it was DARPA who gave us the internet, and they were, yes, transmitting large amounts of data that were coming from physics, but physicists didn't invent it, and it didn't come from the theoretical particle physics folks. It's useless, and we spend lots and lots of money on it. Well, what about relativity? Oh, yeah, Dave, you get on that case all the time. Well, special relativity, if you've seen my movie, Einstein Wrong, go to EinsteinWrong.com. You can click on it and see the movie there on Vimeo. Well, we have a particle... Uh, a experimentalist from Stanford Linear Accelerator that says that he has to unteach special relativity to his grad students because why? They don't observe mass increase in particle accelerators. There's, of course, thousands of scientists dispute both special and general relativity, and we know this uh, fact that we have no other profession that has so many people, as Dr. Glenn Borker pointed out in his blog, how there, what other profession has ten, over almost 10,000 people who've written papers and books about something being wrong with the, th with the theory, in this case, relativity, and no one is paying attention? These are not isolated inc incidents. We have people writing those papers who have PhDs in physics, in relativity, from MIT, my goodness. So there are thousands who dispute both of those theories. Of course, space-time has no physicality. That's one of the things I think many of our subscribers, the reason they come to this channel is because they've come to the same conclusion. GPS does not use relativity like they say. If you don't believe that, again, see EinsteinWrong.com. We have a GPS scientist who is a member of our organization who has over 30 patents. He says that it shows 
GPS shows the flaws in relativity. It doesn't support it. And then, of course, you have a NASA scientist, Dr. Edward Dowdy, who worked at NASA for many years, who's now retired. He says that well, gravity does not, in fact, bend light. Coronas of suns bend light. So we have all these problems with relativity. What about quantum mechanics? Does we get away? No. It's got outrageous predictions. When you take one photon, supposedly, and you're trying to detect whether it goes through this slit or the other slit, and you can't tell, and if you turn on a detector to try to observe it, oh, now it changes from a particle to a wave, or it goes in this one or that one, what they end up is logical, in, incredible, lo illogical conclusions like, it is the case that when we look at it, if I look at a photon coming 10 billion light years away and you look one at one, I look at it with my naked eye and you look at it with a telescope, that it's going to come to us around a star in different, different sides of the star. But that can't be. So it must be the collective consciousness of all conscious beings in the universe that sort of guide it through the one possible universe that it only has one path. I mean... It's uh, history erasing quantum mechanic. Look that up. Quantum mechanics, history, er history, history eraser. Take a look at that. I'm going to do a video sometime on that. And you just won't believe it. It's, they are, as I say in the second bullet point right there, they are loster than lost. I know loster isn't a word, but I'm making it up right now. And I've heard that phrase, but they are lost and lost. Of course, you have the wave particle duality uh, has several, but we have several solutions to that. And it's not from quantum mechanics in the mainstream. Those several solutions come from outside the mainstream. My father and I have a particle model. My father actually uh, has one solution for a wave, the wave particle duality. And we have another person who's got their solution, uh, which is Eric Ryder. And he, uh, all this will, will be on, of course, our website, uh, some, uh, sciencewoke.org, if it's not there already, if you're looking at this in the, in the future. Uh, also, it comes down to no physical model. That's the reason quantum mechanics is so screwed up. And while, yeah, Dave, we have quantum computers, but of course quantum computers are things that we get from the idea that you don't have to use ones and zeros, that quanta comes in many different forms. And if we can do that, and the quantum, mechanic, uh, the quantum computers that we are doing are not taking advantage of quantum physics, they are just taking advantage of taking whatever type of thing in the universe we have that has more than just zero in one state and has many states in between, of course, you're going to be able to store more information in a smaller amount of, because ones and zeros ain't the most efficient way to do it. That's why we have things so small. But quantum mechanics is an absolute mess. Uh, you can pretty much throw it out. Uh, and plate tectonics. Uh, way too little subduction. That is, we have the we know for a fact that mainstream science says that out in the oceans we have new seafloor bed being made and it's spreading out. And then we say for it to for the Earth to keep the same radius, we have to then the seafloor bed has to then dive under. So it's uh, diving under the plate. So you have here's a seafloor that's glowing and it's going to dive into the plate. The problem is we can only at best get 30 percent of the subduction that we need and we can't find the rest which means the earth should be expanding which it is of course then dinosaurs of course would be too big to survive if you don't want to see that there's a link right there uh, dinosaurs too big to survive that's uh stephen hurl wrote that book it's on my on my recommendations on dissidentscience.com go to click on recommendations and of course it's a coincidence that all the contents fitting are fit it's, it's a coincidence that of all continents fitting together on a smaller orb, what are the what are the the possibility? What are the odds of that? Somebody actually calculated that on Facebook, and they came up with 96 quadrillion or something like that. Sounds about right. Then, of course, if you plot the poles, uh, then uh, where we know the poles were, where they started, for instance, the South Pole started in the middle of Africa. Well, it turned out that Africa was wrapped around a smaller orb, and as it expanded, Africa comes up like this, and of course, the the South Pole moves down to where it is in Antarctica. And that fits almost perfectly. And that's why Dr. James Maxlow says that this is the only way you can explain it, really, that makes sense. And of course, we do have uh, explanations for the mass increase at the quantum level. Quantum level means at the subatomic level, that actually atoms are being created from their nuclei and what goes around them, whatever model you have. 
and that says that. Well, those are the areas. And finally, we get to no physicality. And that's one of the great problems in physics and that in, in cosmology as well. We do not have a physical model for light. It's a wave. It's a particle. It's a photon. It's a wave. Um, we don't know. So we can't tell. We can't sit down to a kid and say, this is what light is. Um, we also have the same problem with gravity. We have a graviton. Uh, if you go to the standard model and the the particles in the standard model, you will see a graviton sort of hanging off the side right next to the Higgs boson. Go look it up. But we don't talk about that. You ever hear, you, when you when you have, go to, if you're a high school student, do you hear and talk about the graviton? No. How about magnetic fields? We know they have incredible force, magnetic fields. We know that they exist all over the place. We have, planets have magnetic fields, huge magnetic fields. And the magnetic fields overpower uh, gravity super easily. But we don't have an explanation physically what they are. And of course, real configurations, real physical configurations inside the atom. Go look up a quark, go to Wikipedia, and look at the picture. Here you have a proton that made up a quark. They're all circles. What are they, balls? And they all sort of stick together like that? Are they the same size? Are they blue? We have, they have no idea. Standard model has no idea for the real physical configurations of, in fact, what goes on inside the atom. So those are some those are the 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 problems that we have, the big bang, particle physics, we have quantum mechanics, we have uh, relativity, all of those things that we talked about and those are just a summary of the problems we have and I hope I really do hope that you understand now that we do have objections and we do know what those specific objections are and remember just don't take my word for it or any else anyone else's stay critical stay thinking i'm dave dehilser i am your science therapist getting you to the promised land of becoming science woke or staying science woke ciao for now